Senator, thank you very much for joining us tonight. When you came thank on you, here Lawrence. in your role uh, as chair of the committee describing the rule change that you got through the committee that was going to force, uh, allow the Senate to be able to get around this, uh, it seems like Tuberville today said that that you getting that through the Rules Committee made him quit. Um, well, I think it was a lot of things, but and it was a team effort. Jack Reed, uh, chair of the Armed Services Committee, Senator Schumer, so many of us, Mark Kelly, Tammy Duckworth, we pushed and pushed on this. And finally, finally, Tim Kaine, Senator uh, Tuberville relented. As Lisa Murkowski, Republican from Alaska, said today, it's about time. And I think you really captured this, Lawrence, that this isn't even just about our national security, which is huge. We finally have now a commander of the Persian fleet, of the Fifth Fleet in the Persian Gulf. Uh, we finally um, are able to get 425 people through. It's also their families, spouses who actually quit jobs teaching elementary school because they thought they were going to be somewhere else. People not knowing where to put their parents in assisted living in one location or another. Um, he single-handedly did this and literally put the military chain of command at a para in paralysis, kept it hostage, did that while we are undergoing conflicts all over the world. It was an unbelievable moment of hubris, and I am really happy for these families we got this done. And we knew we had Republican support for that rule that we were going to be able, just from quiet discussions we were having, we were able, we would have had the votes, and he knew it, and today he relented. Yeah, and, and, and this, this was a Republican phenomenon. There is no Democrat who would ever think this. It isn't a matter of, is there a, is there a Democrat who would try this stunt in order to accomplish something? It wouldn't even cross a Democrat's mind. We just have never seen anything of this magnitude. And then, you know, for him afterwards, I was looking at what he said in the hallway. He says, it was pretty much a draw. He says, I'd have, I'd have loved to have five downs in football instead of four, but you can't do it. It's got to be fair for everybody. And then he says, you know, no one got what they wanted. Really? The only people that got hurt by this were our military while he was playing a game. And I'd say it's like a 10-month-long fumble is what this Tuberville folly was, because he hurt military families, he hurt our national security, and in the end, the policy that he can object to if he wants is still rightfully so in place, that if people need health care, including reproductive health care, if women need to go to another state because they don't have it in the state they're in, then the military assists them in paying for that, not for the actual abortion, but for getting to the state where they need to have it. That has not changed. So, and as you point out, these 11 four-star officers that are still up, you know who they are? It is the head of cybercom. Right when we're seeing attacks on the internet and hacking and this as a, as a weapon of warfare all over the world, uh, he is still holding up uh, the commander of the Pacific Air Command. He's still doing that. So we have to get these done before we leave for Christmas. And no matter how we do it, we're going to have to get them done because we can't leave these 11 important positions unfilled. And uh, th this guy is a Trump favorite. Uh, Tuberville is, is a Trump favorite. This is, this is Trumpism in the United States Senate. That is correct, because this guy is someone that was with Donald Trump from the very beginning. And what we know, as you were talking about earlier in the show, the one thing Donald Trump loves is chaos. He loves disruption. He showed throughout uh, his time as president uh, this like in nothing more than chaos and disruption. And that's exactly what Tuberville was doing here, right? No other senator would do something like this to our military, but he did it. And he did it in a way that people were just finally realizing the end of the year, the holidays, that they couldn't live with it anymore. And that's why when we passed that rules change, uh, a temporary resolution was in a permanent rules change, nine to seven, and we were headed to the floor, and Republicans were starting to publicly say that they would support it. That's what finally did it. Um, but it went on way too long, and he cannot be allowed to ever do this again. Senator, before you go, I want to go to your other role on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, today, we saw 
the Biden administration setting a, another record of 150 yes. confirmed judges uh, through your committee. This is a major issue that's at stake in the presidential election is who gets to appoint federal judges. And Joe Biden is on a record pace. He is, and with some amazing choices, including, of course, Katanji Brown Jackson. But we will note that Vice President Harris um, beat the record of any vice president in the history of America today, going all the way back to Senator John Calhoun in 1825, I know you love history, uh, by actually casting today the 32nd tie-breaking vote. It was for a judge. Um, and that includes, by the way, her votes on the, on the um, uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which is ushering in, of course, reduction of pharmaceutical prices, um, the work uh, that we did on the American Rescue Plan, tie-breaking vote. Um, so we were at her home tonight with the Senate. She had the Senate over uh, for a holiday party, and her husband, Doug, uh, gave a very beautiful toast uh, to our vice president, because actually no one in the history of America has cast that many tie-breaking votes, and so many of them for the judges uh, that Joe Biden has nominated and are now in place.